All right, I want to quickly just talk one more thing about box plots, and that's about what they tell us, especially um, what they can tell us about a histogram. So basically, a, pot, a box plot can tell you the level variation. That's like how much is going on. So I can see here um, that the output of a quantity per week is between 1 and 9, with 50% of the data between 3 and 7. That's the spread of the middle data. I can see the skew by looking at actually this key line here, which is our median. If the median is in the center of your square of your middle box, it is symmetrical. If the median moves over to um, to the right over here, then you're going to have a skew to the left. And if the median's over here, you're going to have a skew to the right. Your tail's going to be over on the right-hand side. You can also use it to compare data sets. So let's look at how that happens. So with comparing, we can compare a couple things. So we can compare total variation. So here we've got work output by factories. Now, if you own a factory, you want your factory output to be pretty consistent. You don't want to think, oh, one day I produce 10 cars, the next day I produce 100. You want it to be consistent. Of course, you also want it to be high. There's two things you're looking for. So if we've got two companies, one in Portland and one in Eugene, we compare total variation. So is it consistent? Well, in Portland, we go between 4 and 12. In Eugene, we're only between about 3 and 8. So Eugene is a little more consistent. However, it's consistent on the low end. So we might prefer Portland, even though we don't have that consistency. We can also compare variation within the middle 50%. So again, we've got here a lot more variation going on. This is a much wider box than this box. But again, as a company owner, I might kind of be like, well, at least these are all higher than these. Um, I can also compare my median. So here's key. I'm starting to worry about this company because it's got so much variation, the one in Portland, but I noticed the median. Overall, they are producing about seven units, while in Eugene, they're only producing, you know, close to five. So even though um, this one has a lot more variation going on, it's all above, so I'd still prefer this company. All right, I also can predict the shape of a histogram from a box plot. So in this box plot, the box plot's uh, broken up into, into 25th percentile, okay? Here's our Q1, our lowest percentiles down here, Q2, Q3, Q4. Now the interesting thing is that I can see that these are all about the same height, right? That means there's about the same number of data, of data points in each of these quadrants. So this would actually be a uniform distribution. The data is uniformly distributed because this amount of data in each quadrant is equal. I can tell by the size, okay? Um, here, I've got something a little bit different, okay? I've got 25% of the data is right here, 25% here, but it's squished between these values. So that must mean there's a lot of a lot of numbers that have these values. So I would expect that between 15 and about, what is that is, 17, it would be tall. Those bars in the histogram would be tall. Whereas this, same number of values are spread out further. And then I even have a little outlier. So it's going to be, this is one. So it's going to be really short over here. So when I think about this, I kind of swap it and um, kind of flip it to the side. And I realize this is actually going to be a nice symmetric data set with, again, that buildup of tons of data in a small space, and then the rest of the data spread out. Now here, look at this one. Try and guess this one. Now we've got a lot of data spread out here, so these are going to be short. Then we've got kind of, well, not so much data here. I mean, I'll, and then a lot of data in a smaller area and a lot of data in a smaller area. So that means these guys are probably going to have tall um, bars right here with these, but it's data spread out over more values are going to be shorter. So you could actually expect a skew. You can see it's going to be more values in the higher numbers. So the higher numbers are going to have your um, higher bars, and so it's going to actually end up being skewed to the left. Okay, if they had been down here, it would have been skewed to the right. So the skewness, it's hard to get. It is really kind of complicated to think about. But what I have to think about is this space represents kind of if every data set was a person and we thought of putting people into places. I've got 25 people here, 25 here, 25 here, and 25 here because each quartile. Right in this box, those 25 people are squished together tight. They're squished together tight so it's making them go up high, okay, because there's lots of data in this one little teeny area. Here, these 25 people can spread out long, all along here. So the data is much shorter here, much shorter. Again, um, here, 
not as much data either. So you've got this, this actually does not seem quite right. Um, so you can see here when you have things squished up, that's going to show you where the high bars are. So you can see when things are skewed, the way they're skewed is where things are stretched out. So this is going to have that right skew. This is also going to have a right, um, a right skew because again, it, our higher numbers are up here. So if we had turned this to the side, it would look exactly like that. Um, so when you have your median down low, or over to the left, you know you've got a right skew and the opposite for a left skew. All right, so hard to kind of grasp your head around it. You might want to watch that part again. Your assignment now, you want you to get ready to record yourself. You record yourself to answer questions um, to the three following slides. Here are the questions. You're probably going to want to pause at parts to do this. You're going to want to record this onto Canvas. All right, so our first slide is looking at temperature. So could you please describe the skew for each month? Okay, whether this is a right, left, or symmetrical. And then which month has the most outliers? Next question. What day has the most variation in hours slept? What day in general do you get the most sleep? And what day in general do you get the least? So look at this data and please answer that question. Record that. And the third question, what can you conclude about male and females from the box plot? Looking at here, so this is female and male actors winning Oscars. So what can you tell me about them by looking at this box plot? To answer this, you will have to answer it in one long recording. Um, so get ready and enjoy. 